Alright, so show up who's what's going on. It's your boy, I'm on my YouTube. Welcome back to a brand new episode. Today we're doing something different. We are reviewing season two of Young, Famous, and African. Guys, this uh, series is amazing. I really love season two. I watched season one last year. Season two came out recently. Banger. I am wearing shades for two reasons. Number one, I have favorite characters. Number two, they wear shades. Those favorite characters. That's the part number one. Number two, these lights keep making my eyes really, really red and really, really teary. So I'm gonna be probably taking them on and off, on and off. But I'm gonna see how I look, man. I hope you guys don't judge me. I'm not. I'm honestly not doing it because I think I'm cool. Or like I feel like I'm a superstar. Yes, Swanky does. Yes, I love Swanky. Yes, he's my favorite character. But it's not about that. Uh, it's for to protect my my eyes against this light. Like I literally am reshooting because my eyes were red and yeah, it was bad. So please just hold on to the zazels. Let me be my guy. So guys, if you guys do not know, Young, Famous, and the African is an amazing show on Netflix, guys. Season two just came out. It's a bang of a show. I'm talking about drama. I'm talking about all of our African stars. We've got Diamond. We've got Kanyimba. We've got features from Banang. It is amazing, and I loved it so much. So I'm going to be starting this show like this. I'm going to tell you guys my top three characters. I'm going to tell you my bottom three characters, not because they, like, suck or anything, but just because you will hear why they're at the bottom. And then from there, I'm going to be talking about all of the drama happening between all of these friends, bro. Like, honestly speaking... This show is should be called like defining friendships or something because these people are defining friendships, they are canceling friendships, they are sabotaging friendships, and it's all just about how they are just they don't like each other, these people, bro. They don't like each other. I'm so confused. Are you guys friends? Are you guys a family? What's happening? So let's start off with my favorite characters. Ah Drip Too Hot. This is the reason why I'm wearing these houses because of Swanky. Drip too hot, don't stand too close. Swanky is the definition of Mswenko, swagger. That man looks fire in every single diary session, every single scene, whether they're playing basketball, whether they're at the beach. He said, listen, drip comes first. I don't care what you guys are doing. I'm not here to do these funny, funny things. My brand is my drip. So I'm a drip out. I'm a drip too hard. Swanky is my favorite outside of him being a diva towards the new characters. We've got two new characters and three new characters in this season. We've got Louis. Lewis. We've got Bonang, which is which is amazing. She was there for a couple of episodes. And then we've got Hannah Montana. We've got <laughs> Fantana. Fantastic. <laughs> which is dope. I'm gonna put the shades back on because I it's too sore. But anyway, top character, Swanky. His drip is too much. He knows who he is. He keeps his character. It's like don't don't, don't talk to me funny. Don't be funny around me. He literally is that guy. I change it, change His character is consistent. Number two, I don't know how the hell this bro is such a good guy. Andile, my man, did you go to all boys school of, of etiquette and, and posture and I only drink water? I love this man so much. I think he should, based on what we see on the show. Also, guys, everything I'm going to be saying is based on what was showed to us on the show. I don't know these people's real lives outside of the show. I don't know them. I don't know them, so I don't want to say, I don't want to be disrespecting them. I'm going to be speaking based on what was shown to us. So if any of you guys that are part of Young, famous African are watching this, you guys did your thing, there's no hate, there's no bad blood, you know what I'm saying? I'm just talking based on what was shown to us. Andy, like, bro, too cool. He is a gentleman. He doesn't like problems, doesn't like disrespect. He takes care of himself. His drip isn't crazy, but he always looks so clean. My guy, my guy. Number three. <laughs> it's Diamond, bro. Diamond is so cool. I feel like these guys are all ballers, right? But Diamond showcases how much of a baller he is. When he comes in, it's a private jet. It's a private plane. When he's getting an accommodation, he's got one of the nicest houses that I've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? The way he fosters the new character, Fantana. It's also, also like, it's just so smooth. You know, he doesn't hold himself accountable. He doesn't hold himself accountable for the things he says, which is a problem, but... He is so smooth. He's so cool. Love him to bits. And then if I had to choose a favorite lady, because my, my top three is just, is just guys. But if I choose a favorite lady, I'd definitely give it to Nadia Nakai. Nadia, bro, you are too, Nadia, you are too cool, bro. She's so real. She's doing her thing. She's very protective of the people that she cares for. She's not rao rao for no reason. She's doing her thing. And she's being Nadia, bro. Like, she's in one. I was just there, like, I wasn't sure about Nadia. Then she's like, okay, cool. She showed me. This person's really cool. Season two, ah, uh, braga, 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 braga. I'm like a Nadia fan now. Like, I'm actually a stand of Nadia. So, shout out to Nadia. Loved your character. 
Now the bottom three and it's not because we don't like you, it's just because what were you doing? Louis, guys, no man. I blame Netflix. I blame, I blame, I blame Netflix, guys. Louis is a new character. My brew is from Namibia, if I'm not mistaken. Namibian guy. You know, he's here. He you can see, I think he's part of the Forbes there under 30. You can see he's a brew who, who who has his life together, but he's not a part of the top dogs the way he was perceived, you know. I know when he first came in and he met Bonang, who's also another new character, Bonang was like, are you, a, are you a baller? And he was like, no, 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 I'm doing my thing, you know, like, I'm from Namibia, I do events, you know, I produce shows, I do a lot of TV shows, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy, but I'm not that guy, you get me? Yeah, he's at the bottom because, not because of who he is, first of all, who he is is dope, seems like a cool brew, but who we saw, uh, uh, bro, how can you be such a... Bro, stand up for yourself. He never stood up for himself in the whole season. He had a lot of altercations with Banang. Altercation. Yeah, just with Banang. You know, he was kind of dick riding Diamond a little bit. And it's just they're like, bro, even though these guys are all top dogs, you must stand firm, my guy. Like, you can see that, like, the way he speaks about Banang, oh, Banang is, oh. Then you can see the way, like, he kind of, like, simps around her. The way he kind of sips around Diamond. And you can see that everybody is a big dog for him. And he kind of, like, he jumpy said that, like, he shouldn't have been there. Like, he doesn't seem like he's... An equal, like someone was even saying that he seems like he was Banang's Tampanang, uh, Kanyin Bao's like puppy, bro. And I was just like, yo, but I think this brew is actually quite successful, quite an amazing entrepreneur. So much love to him. But bottom, based on the show, bottom, 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 cool, 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 cool. Number two, bottom, Fantana, Fantana, Hannah Montana, my man, what do you want, my guy? Like, cool, you're from America, then you live in Ghana, you're the top, what, what, but like, bro, all you're trying to do is stir up problems. All you're trying to do is talk shit about the group and say this group is dysfunctional. Yes, they are dysfunctional, but Lorena, my girl, you are new. Behave, my girl, you are new. Behave, Fantana, behave, my girl. Like you are, you know, you're still starting up. Relax. You know, uh, you know, her and Diamond doing their thing. Do your thing. You know, she's with Diamond. That was dope. You know, they shared a lamza. They were in the studio. That was really cool. But she just wasn't giving me like, like, we don't know what her values are. We don't know what she's about. Like, She's just like stirring nonsense, bro. So she's definitely the bottom. And then last is Annie. And I'm going to tell you why I am putting Annie. Annie, bro, who are you? Like Annie is definitely a successful person. Great. Kudos. But bro, accountability, Yana. What is the accountability, bro? Let me start off with this thing. Those are my top three, my bottom three. Now I'm going into the friendships. Annie and my guy, Swanky. Bro, both of you, first of all, Row, row, like let's speak sauce adults. You know what I'm saying? Annie and Swanky had problems episode one, episode two, episode three. We didn't know what the hell was happening. We weren't aware what was happening. We were confused. Blah, 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 blah. They're taking their time to tell us what the hell is happening. So now we ask Swanky, Swanky, what's happening? Swanky goes, Oh no, I don't know. And he says, oh, I can't speak about it. Swanky says, No, no, no. Then Annie says, Nah. Swanky did me. Then Swanky goes, Nah. Annie did me. Then now we don't know what's happening. Now we're being fed this information. Now Annie's the bad guy. Can't the jiggy jiggy know? Swanky's the bad guy. If you watch the show, you find out that you know what? The bad guy happens to be Annie. And she does not want to hold herself accountable. My boy Swanky was trying to throw an event in Nigeria. Hit up Annie's management. We all know this. Hits up the management. Management says, oh, dope. Oh, wait, let's rock. Let me put Annie on the bar, on the brr, on the belliolus. She puts Annie on, Annie goes, yo, I know you like Swanky, but hold on. Let's not work with Swanky right now. I'm like, ah. And Swanky hears this, bro. And he still decides to gaslight Swanky after Swanky heard it. My guy heard and he say, I don't want to work with... Blah, 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 blah. You get me? And she still denies it. Swanky confronts her. She goes, Swanky, Swanky, you're young. You, you pop in for a year. This is the big dog. Do you know who I am? I'm the guy. Like... Bro, the whole of season one, she seemed like innocent, like, yo, Mamzo, like, let's respect Mamzo, you know. Season two, also, I'm like, oh, let's respect Mamzo, you know. Let's respect auntie, like, she's doing her thing, you know. She's just she's standing by her man. She loves the man. Beautiful, beautiful family. But where is the accountability, my guy? Where is it? Uh -uh. Then Swanky says, you know what, let's talk again. I'm going to bring Andile into this relationship, and Andile is going to help us squash this beef. Still again there, she goes, Swanky, 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 stop talking about the drama. I think it's the last episode. She's basically gaslighting him and saying, let's just forgive each other. But how can Swanky forgive somebody that hasn't held himself accountable? 
Personally speaking, if my friends do rubbish with me, bro, I can't, I can't forgive you because you haven't said sorry for your actions. Now you're just a top dog and I must forgive you that you're a top dog. No, Swanky, no, my guy. No, 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 no. That's not how we do it, Swanky. No, I talked to Andile. Andile, hey, hey. You know, I watched this guy episode one, two, three, four. Gentlemen, don't swear. That's not how you refer to ladies. No, 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 you know, only drinking water. He's my guy. I'm loving him to a bit. Then I saw no man can be too good to too cool too good to be true. Even my girl was saying, nah, and the guy, I don't hate on him. I was trying to find a mistake with this bro. I won't lie. I'm like, this guy cannot be perfect. And mind you, I still think he is amazing. He's my favorite character. This guy's got two baby mamas. That's not even a problem, bro. But for me, it's how flirtatious he is with the woman. We see with Zari. Him and uh, Andila and Diamond have their own issues from season one because Andila was fostering Zari in season one. Now she's in two and Dile is like trying to still sweet talk to Zari. And Dile and Diamond squash their beef. They speak. Well, out of all the women that you're going for, why my baby mama? And Dile goes, I cool. I hear you. Low key. Now when Andile is speaking to Zari, he's there, they're like, you know, yeah. They're like, yeah, but you know, we should speak like outside of this, like without the group and everything. You know, he's on his Yeah, we should speak. I'm there like Andile. And delay. Then he brings in two baby mamas. I'm like, ah, ah, what are you, Mr. Chama Chama guy? And you can see that, like, all the women in his life, the three that we know, Zari and the two baby mamas, he literally, they all speak of him so highly. They all want him. Check out Zari, she might not want him. Baby mamas, they're low key fighting for him. The one is playing it cool, you know, be sure, but cancel the other one. The other one is like, don't take me. I like you. Kiss me. Kiss me here. You know, she's like, she's about to brew. Which shows you that he's an actual good guy, but maybe something happened with the girl, something happened with him, you know, and it was tough. But you can see there's a good brew. Still love him, though. Diamond, my guy. Outside of him, you know, finessing Fantana and then speaking shit about Annie and then did not, not speaking shit. So what happened was, I'm sure you guys know this, Diamond hooked up with Fantana. Fantana and um, Zari had some beef, right? Because obviously he's hooking up with Diamond. Because... Fontana hooks up with Diamond and tells every single cast member. Yeah, and Diamond and I went to the studio and then we kiss. Next person. Yeah, Diamond and I went to the studio and then we kiss. It was so much fun. But like, I'm doing my thing and he's doing his. Uh, my sister, okay, just put on the damn WhatsApp group at this point, my guy. Like, you're telling everybody the story, bro. Chill out. You get me? Then Diamond tells him, he goes, yeah. As he's fostering Fantana, he's like, yeah, you know, Fantana. Yeah, you know, Zara's the mother of my kid. She wants another kid with me. You know, she wants another kid with me. What does Fantana do? She goes and tells, Hannah Fantana tells everybody. He goes, yo, Diamond said that Zari wants a baby with her. Diamond said that. And then from there, obviously, Zari finds out. Zari now has beef with um, Fantana. And for me, Zari is spicy. Spice goes. Zari reminds me of someone very close to me. She's very spicy, right? She's very, very spicy, but she's also very confrontational. Hannah Montana is even spicier because all Diamond said was that Zara wants to have a kid with her. That's all we know. We don't know what was off camera. What's Hannah Montana saying? Montana, her Fantana is busy saying, no, uh, no, um, Diamond is talking shit about you. You're an old ass B. She's like, what? I'm an old ass B. You're a young ass B. You're a horror slut. It's like, nah, shut up, auntie. You could be my mama. I said, ah, what? Fantana, you just arrived. You're telling her she could be your mother, bro. Fantana, no man. And Fantana was just like, bro, I know you're doing too much. Like, shut out a bit, you know. Outside of that, Fantana wasn't that deep. I don't know. They never really showcased Fantana and Bonang's relationship, like um, outside of you know what we saw. And she kept claiming Bonang is my friend. Bonang is my friend. But Angus, my friend, I'm just there like, oh, man, we didn't see a friendship come. We saw you guys chill once or twice. But I get it, maybe they became, maybe they are friends, you know? We don't know. She also likes claiming things. And I feel like her saying, Bonang is my friend, obviously she knows who Bonang is, you know? So her saying, like, Bonang is my guy. It's also like, you know? Same with Swanky. Like, Swanky really got turned up on Louis about Bonang. And it's just there like, okay, Bonang is a superstar, but like, let's evaluate everything that happened. Now let's go into the Bonang and Louis situation. Because you know we're doing friendship by friendship by friendship. Louis. Louis, my guy. Man. Louis, man. Louis, man. Louis, man. Also you, Louis, man. I, 
Louis, Louis, we are long way so long, my guy. <laughs> Louis, <sighs> I feel like they made him to seem like a Popeye, man. Like he's arriving, as during his arrival, Kanye's fighting with the group, so now he's losing a point. He's getting grilled. But Kanye, you're busy here calling us words, but you're trying to introduce your guy. Who's this guy introducing? So now he's really he's getting a bad intro. Two, the show makes him seem like he's some buff. He is. He's like a buff, handsome, young guy who the ladies love. And then from there, Nadia puts him in his place. Bang! He goes, yeah. Uh, what Kanye goes, yeah, I'm going to invite you to a champagne party. And then he's like, oh, that'd be great. I have an MCC. And they're like, bro, not the same thing. And then, yo, yo, I hope you guys remember the scene. When Lewis is getting introduced, man. He goes, Nadia, I actually worked with you on a music video. Na, 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 na. I was there. And then Nadia goes, oh yeah, there was a lot of extras. <laughs> Nadia Nakai, why are you bullying? Uh, why, uh, why are you bullying uh, Louis? Uh, not Louis Vuitton, my man. So now he's getting called an extra. They say you don't have a champagne, you have an MCC. They keep checking him. Then from there, his intro is bad. Like, I just felt so bad for Louis. Cool. Now Louis wants to push Gaiman Fontana. Now, he's pushing him on for 10, like, you'll take me on a date, but he's coming through with a soft boy approach. My boy, Diamond, has already secured the lumser. But you know, Fantana's like, you know, you know, I'm about living life. I'm not tied to no man. And I'm like, you know, know yourself, girl. But Louis is like, no, take you on a date. Let me show you, you know, what does the Namibian do? Cool. They go on the date. He's a bit soft, buys flowers. They go cha-cha-cha-cha, dancing. But he's a bit weird, and Fantana doesn't really mess with him, right? Cool. They already do it. She friends on them. Now, Louis, hungry Louis, hungry Louis is asking Kanyin Bao what Zari would think about them having a baby together. That's what he said. He said, I want to get a surrogate. She wants to get a surrogate. What do, you, what do you think she would think about me taking her eggs and then my sperm and then put it into a surrogate and I have a baby? Zari was automatically disrespected. She said, what did this young boy just say to me? He's saying he wants to have a kid with me. Does he know who I am? Also, bro, Louis, you're like 26, 27. Zari is like over 35, my guy. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Then obviously they tell us that, you know, Louis is going through some family things. And I get that. It was so nice to get some insight as to why he's the way he is, why he wants a kid. His family's kind of disowned him. His community has just, just disowned him because I think he's been on TV, limelight. I think he had sex on Big Brother. So they were like, oh, why not? Time to come here with your TV, YouTube stuff. I get it. You know, shop. Bro, the next one is just, it's just confusing for me, bro. Like DJ Naked and, and Kaylee. Bro, Naked, what are you doing, my guy? Like, it seems like Naked is not ready for a serious relationship. And it's obviously justified. I think he's been married twice. So obviously he's like, I've done this before and it's tough. So I can't just do it again, you know. So I get I get naked. But now he is fake proposing to Katie. Like, first of all, he brings Fantana. Then he's like, he's bringing Fantana. He doesn't even tell his hand he's bringing this Fantana hand. You know, Katie's like, ah, oh, what's happening? Who's this girl? Fantana bumps her glass. He's dead quick, Mr. Gentleman, Mr. Nice Guy. Katie's like, oh, you can be nice. <laughs> also, every time naked does something nice for Katie, Katie's like, bro, what are you doing? Like, it's not you. You can evidently see that Katie is saying, bro, you are saying nice things, doing nice things because the cameras are on. And that's what it seemed like to me. And obviously, I, I know Nick is probably doing his thing because even he was there like, Alo, Anna, Katie, I'm doing these nice things. Mara, every time I do them, blah, blah, blah. every time I do them, you, you complain. So how can I now do them? Because when I do them, you complain. I get him, bro. It's like, yes, I might not have always done these things. But when you voice them to me, I am now doing them. So receive them. Don't now every time say, did you do this? I get naked. My guy, I get you. But naked, he he move, when Katie's not there, he sounds and moves like a single man, like a bachelor, which is off. And then Kanye brainwashes him to do the most absurd thing and do a trial proposal where I propose to you to see how you would react if I propose to you, if I'm not mistaken. I propose to you to see how would it like how would it, how would it be like if we were engaged. Very weird for me. Very weird for me. Very weird for me. Yeah, bro. Very, very weird for me. Like, bro, naked. Don't propose. You can't play with somebody's feelings. You can't love a person to the extent, Kaylee. You can't play with somebody's feelings, bro. Like, naked, my guy. Do, guys, no man. Please do not be influenced by Kanyin Bao and DJ Naked. No man. No man should f do a trial proposal. Speak about it with your girl. Baby, what do you feel about proposing? 
you know. But I guess maybe it's 2023, you know, AI is there. We're trying new things. And as I do not know, I do not understand, you know. Two Baba, <laughs> my guy, yo, she's seeing a reality show. There was a scene where there was two Baba. There is his wife, there is Andilia, there's Nadine Akai, and I think there is DJ Naked. I, correct, I stand to be corrected. They're talking about relationships, you know. And then two Baba's talking about, like, how a man behaves. He's like, he's not speaking about himself. What's the guys are trying to say? He's not speaking about himself. But he's saying, as a man, I love the person, like my wife, the person that I love. When we have sex, we're making love, you know. If I'm out and about and I'm in the streets, I'm in Kenya or I'm in Ghana or I'm in Swaziland. And then my, my guy downstairs starts thinking for me. I'm going to just have sex. It's not love. And that's okay. She basically said that's okay. So now Nadia is there pressing him. Like, what do you mean to Baba? What are you saying to Baba? Explain to us what you mean to Baba. Do you mean you go out and do those things to Baba? Or are you saying it's okay? Are you saying most men do that to Baba? You get me? So now we're all confused. I'm just there like, hey, something like two Baba say that's what he does. And he is there acting confused. She's there like... Not your bathroom, she's like, going to the bathroom. I'm like, Annie, bro, this is your man. You can't be surprised. Like, there's no way your man can say these things in front of your friends. And when you're surprised, because that's your guy. So obviously, like, dude, obviously he's he's you guys have been married, you guys have kids. You know how he's like. Because that's my Tom, it's not the first time. And Annie's the acting surprise. And then come on, Andile, my uh, Andile, my king. Andile goes, no, um, Nadia, don't press her because it's a sensitive topic because. They were trending and they were saying that Tuba impregnated um, uh, the personal banker. But then, you know, Annie corrected them and said, no, the personal banker gets gets pregnant every two every two years. So it's not even Tuba, they're just trying to talk shit. That's old gossip. Cool. That's grand. Bro, I just want to say, Kanyin Bao, we know who Kanyin Bao is, right? She's an elegant lady. She's a boss as B. She's doing her thing. This season, she was so calm and relaxed, bro. Like, I think she only said one thing when she was trying to actually defuse the situation. Season one, hey, she was giving team leader, it was, it was tough and tense. This season, she was calm. And I was going to be like, you know, that was dope. That was nice to see. Kanye wasn't like, she wasn't acting funny, man. She was trying to squash beef. And obviously, you know, people that have a lot of influence, a lot of money, they sometimes forget how to speak because... It goes row, 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 row. So kudos to her. She didn't give me any drama, any stress. She just called um some she just addressed two squads beef thing. She's like, nah, you guys act like a bunch of bees. And I get that, you know, she was just trying to squash the beef. Bad choice of words, very disrespectful, but she had good intentions, you know. So I, I kinda get her, man. She's and she stood by what she said, by the way. She didn't apologize. She said apologize for who? <laughs> Which absolutely killed me. It defeated me. Bonang, 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 Bonang. We loved you, Bonang. Bonang was amazing. Bonang was amazing. I wish she was there for longer. She made me feel like I was watching a South African piece of content when she was doing her diary sessions. She was very South African, Tswana girl. Dope, man. I don't like what she did to my bro, Louis. <laughs> like, Louis was wrong because Louis obviously was having the thing with Fontana or Fontana. He wanted Fontana. Then he's telling Fontana, yo, be careful. Don't become diamond side piece. Whatever you do, do not become damn inside peace because you'll be known for that. You know, he's trying to protect her. But at the same time, Bonang's like, bro, a woman can do whatever the fuck she wants. Like, if she's trying to hook up with this guy, this guy, this guy, I've smashed the biggest stars. I do what I want. So I kind of give up what I'm going to say. But I'm going to say, bro, and it's, I mean, it's, it's Lou, Louis was speaking from current societal standards, which are very wrong. And Bonang was speaking from, do we need to break through those societal things? So Louis was saying, bro, you're going to do this and this might happen. Bonang says, bro, even if that shit happens, that shouldn't be a factor. You get me? So I get Louis was trying to be protective, but like, we need to stop protecting women. Women can do whatever the fuck they want to do nowadays. Like, women should do whatever they want to do. Not even nowadays. Women should do whatever they want to do. So I get why Bonang got so frustrated. But I feel like Bonang was angry because she was talking about this guy's desert. And that's his country, Namibia. <laughs> she said, when are you in your desert? Was just so wrong, Banang, man. Don't do that, man. That's not nice. So I think she was mad about Louis because, you know, Louis was saying he booked Banang back in the day and then, he, you know, Banang had to leave because Louis forgot to book the accommodation and, 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 and. So it's like, bro, I kind of get it. But Banang, yo, bro, chill, dog, chill, bro. Like, she really snapped. I was still like, yo, 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 yo. Also, I liked how her Nadia, how her, how her Nadia, like, interacted. That wasn't bad at all, bro. That was really, really nice. 
Now let's move on to the production value. Production value, I give that thing <laughs> kudos. Location selections, beautiful. Location settings, beautiful. It's giving lavish. It's giving young, famous, and African. They're drinking more way. They're drinking Hennessy. Kitty cheese bar. It's nice foods. It's cocktails. Everything looks good. It's not a mistake. They're being driven in the cars. The cars are all luxurious. Like, it is a beautiful piece of work. And it's showcasing how successful these people are. So part of each and every one of them. I hope I think those are all their cars, or it's very close to their standard of living. So that's just they're like, wow, these guys are really working hard and really make your money. So it's very beautiful to see. Like they're all killing it, and the whole production is amazing. Sound was amazing, no sound problems. Maybe I think the beginning of the last episode, I don't know if it was my laptop or something was wrong for the first couple of minutes, but that was also cleaned up very nicely. The camera guys, the DPs, the visuals, beautiful. That was all stunning, camera work, diary sessions, outfit, wardrobe, beautiful. Like, I'm not even trying to guess, that was, that was, that was amazing. Um, what didn't I like on the production, man? Drone shots were beautiful. I, I, I can't bash the production. I can't even say it could be better. Maybe because I'm not heavily into production, but I am into production, you know. I've, I've done a show or two, and obviously it doesn't compete with Netflix, but I can see what they were doing, and for me, that was so seamless. Music selection. I can't even remember what songs they were playing, which showcases how seamless and how like amazing the music was, bro. Like if you can put music and you're doing the scoring correctly, and we're not thinking why is this song playing, what's happening, and it's just contributing to the mood. Beautiful. So whoever did the music, bro, 10 out of 10. Scoring was beautiful. I think I heard a Casper song here and there, but even in the Casper songs, they wouldn't play the the trendy parts. They played the beginning, and if the songs would feel familiar, but they wouldn't feel like it's a Casper song. So that was amazing. I loved that. The friendship, scary. The plot, drama. Loved it. You know, it's a reality show. What what are they meant to give us? You know, they can't give us fairy tales. They must give us the juicy parts. Love that. Yeah, man. Locations, like in terms of the cities, Joburg, Cape Town, beautiful. Loved that they went to Cape Town. Absolutely. Stuck. I give the show a good rating. I'm trying to think what I, 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 I things. I know you guys are gonna judge me, man. But I give the show a, like an eight out of ten. Like it was a, for a South African, not even South African. A reality show that was good that was drama fault storylines plots they bold on all the drama so nice them boom, 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 boom. bro that was beautiful so shout out to them shout out to the crew shout out to the post production crew shout out to the script writers shout out to everybody love that piece of work let me know if i should react to more of these things guys this is a lot of fun and yeah man i'm sorry for the shades again guys i don't even like these are level shades i don't even like wearing shades i just don't want to uh, have red eyes because like i said guys i am currently reshooting this if you enjoyed this video please give me a couple likes man i'd appreciate that comment down below Halala. i have just launched an ebook so make sure to get your ebook on youtube growth selecting a niche scaling up strategies to grow how to get your first brand deal all of that good good is in the ebook so link in the description baby www.thegrowwithmalumi.com see you guys on the flip side shoot Ray-Bans and Catamarans